Good morning. When the disaster arrives, people are going to be asking why. Does God tell why? We're at Jeremiah 16 this morning, verses 10 to 13. Let's read it. And it shall be when you show this people all these words, and they say to you, Why has the Lord pronounced all this great disaster against us? Or what is our iniquity, or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then you shall say to them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, they have walked after other gods, and have served them, and worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and not kept my law. And you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart, so that no one listens to me. Therefore I will cast you out of this land into a land that you do not know, neither you nor your fathers, and there you shall serve other gods day and night, for I will not show you favor. Does God tell why? He does. The answer is that they have forsaken God and worshipped idols. They have not kept God's law, which we all remember says, You shall have no other gods before me. The kingdom of Judah has done worse even than their fathers. They can look back and see how God's hand has delivered his people from, from hopeless situations time and time again. And still they've forsaken him. Their ancestors saw God deliver them too, but their track record with him was a lot shorter. I mean, they were coming out of gross ignorance, hundreds of years of Egyptian religion and things like that. Not for Judah. Judah has been functioning for hundreds of years and they should have their act together. I mean, they're not exactly just walking out of Babylonian or Egyptian ignorance. Judah has done much worse and is coming out of a situation much less ignorant, much, much higher level of accountability and responsibility. And so they've done much worse than their fathers. They've turned back from him even though they had much higher privileges than their fathers. And each one is following the evil dictates of his own heart. They want to worship false gods. Well, says God, they're, they're going to do it from the standpoint of captivity. They will be compelled to serve foreign gods in a foreign land. Their education is going to be hard, but God's going to teach them. Now, of course, for us, the question so much later for us is, how do we apply this to our own situation? And I think there's some help right here. Did you see it at verse 12? Did you see it there? And you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart, so that no one listens to me. Aha! You think you are free, you think you're, you're being free, but that's exactly when you're a slave. You follow the dictates. Did you catch that? The dictates of your own evil heart. Do you want to be free? I mean, really free? Your nature is fallen. Unless you are born again, you're going to be a slave. Slave to your own self, lack of self-control. You're not free. But if Jesus makes you free, you'll be free indeed. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, the devil's a clever devil, and he wants us to think that we're free. He wants us to feel that we're free when exactly that's the very time that we are not free. So Lord, we, we want to be right, but we recognize that we can easily follow the dictates of our own evil heart. Help us, Lord, not to have evil hearts. May we be born fresh from above by your, the power of your Holy Spirit. Change us, Lord. Help us to become more like Jesus, to live more like Jesus. We look to you, Lord. Without you, we have no hope. You are our hope. Bless us and keep us and use us in your service, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, does God tell why? Well, yes, he does. The reason why is that unconverted people are unfree. But if we receive Jesus, we can experience authentic freedom. For some of us, it will be the first time in our lives we've really been free. God go with you today as a free man, emancipated by Jesus Christ.